Good morning, afternoon, and good night. Um, thank you for attending another ORIPA webinar series uh, showdown that we have here. Uh, my name is Lance Sizek. Excuse me for one second. This never seems to want to work. There we go. I'm Lance Sizek. I'm the Western Regional Sales Manager. So myself, along with Mick Dolan Mayer, the Eastern Regional Sales Manager, and Norio Kobayashi, our product specialist for North America. We are um, your team for sales for the process and environmental division here as far as gas analyzers go. Uh, today's presentation will be on the PX375, the continuous particulate monitor, which uses X-ray fluorescence. We're very honored to have um, to have Yusuke Mizuno as our presenter today. He is the marketing and product manager for the PX375. So you'll get quite a bit of detail on this. Uh, a few housekeeping issues is that if you are not muted, I would like to ask that you please do mute your microphone. We don't want uh, we don't want to have a lot of background noise to make it difficult for folks to hear. Um, secondly, uh, we do have a chat box, and if you have any questions that are posed throughout the course of the presentation, we ask you that we ask that you uh, enter those questions into the chat box. They will be proctored, and once this presentation is over, I'll be reading off those questions to Yusuke, and we'll do our best to answer those questions on the spot. If we're not able to, then we will certainly follow up with you um, to get you the answers that you need. Um, a few more uh, points of interest, our social media platforms. We are all across uh, all the platforms. We do have a YouTube channel, uh, so if you'll go in and search for Hariba Process and Environmental and subscribe to our channel, our previous webinars, as well as some other information will be uh, is available for viewing there as well as this presentation will be up at the beginning of next week for for you to view at your convenience our other social media platforms instagram twitter facebook and linkedin we ask that you please go search us out follow us we do post quite often on that thanks to our marketing manager stevie lee um, uh, again if you have any questions throughout the course of this presentation please do enter them into the chat box down so uh, what we're going to talk about here, just a quick agenda, is I'll go through and just give you kind of a 30,000 foot view of who is Hariba, where do we come from, where are we now. We'll talk a bit about the Houston facility and then uh, very briefly about some of the products, which if you've attended some of our webinar, uh, if you've attended the webinar series in the past, you're very familiar with these products. If you haven't, then um, you'll get a very brief explanation. Again, if you do want to learn more about our products, you can contact either myself, Mick, or Norio, or just go to the YouTube channel and you can find some more detail there. Once I'm finished with that, I'll be passing it on to Yusuke uh, for him to dive a little deeper into the PX375 into what it is and how it works. And again, at the end, we'll have a question and answer session. So. Who is Hariba? So we were founded in 1953 in Kyoto, Japan. We were uh, we were founded to uh, for the sale and the manufacture for, uh, for um, analysis and technologies. Since 1953, we've grown to around 7,200 employees working out of 39 global locations. Uh, I would say that number's probably uh, expanded a bit because of the uh, COVID-19 scenario that we're all under. I uh, hope everyone's doing well and safe. Um, and in 2019, we did just a shade over 1.2 billion in US dollars in sales. So where does that 1.842 billion in sales come from? Well, we have five different under the umbrella. There's the automotive test systems, which handles automotive emissions, um, engine, basically anything to do with automotive emissions. We have the process and environmental division, which is our division, which is gas analyzers as well as water quality testing. Then we have the medical, we have the semiconductor, and we have the scientific division. So all these divisions are all broken up. Uh, we all fall under the Hariba Empire. The Americas more specifically. So what you see here are facilities that we have in both North and South Americas. Specific to the process and environmental group, which is our group, obviously, we have the Irvine California facility, whereas we do have some product management out there, but that's uh, the bulk of our uh, operations out there are admin, um, HR, finance, accounting, things of that nature. Um, 
the things that make the engine go. And then we have our Pasadena, Texas facility, which Pasadena is a uh, suburb that's southeast of Houston. So if you're not familiar with that, it's on the way to Galveston. Um, shoot down I-45 and it's just off to your left. Um, so a bit about the Houston facility. Um, it was uh, this particular group was actually um, started by Cameron Process back in 1985. Uh, Hariba purchased it in 2012, and we opened this fancy new building in 2018, which houses 100% Hariba employees. And who are those employees? We have CAD designers, project managers, electricians, mechanical engineering, and very recently we've moved manufacturing of uh, the bulk of our units. Excuse me. Um, the bulk of our units uh, are now built in Houston, so the ENDA, the VA. Um, things of that, uh, instruments of that cali caliber are all being built uh, in the Houston facility. So we're definitely excited about that. So let me bear with me one minute. Okay. A bit more detail about Horeba Houston. Um, again, we do analyzer shelters, and our goal is to provide a turnkey solution for you regarding analyzer shelters and closures. Uh, and that goes all the way from engineering, design, fabrication, uh, installation, and then project documentation as well. Uh, we do offer field service. Obviously, we can always come out to your facility. We offer depot repair for certain analyzers as well. We also do offer embedded service contracts, which um, allow us to uh, have our own Horiba uh, service technicians on site full time to be able to ensure that our um, analyzers are always up and running, that you, it's it's an insurance policy more or less to make sure that you don't have to worry about any of your uh, emissions. And then we also do RATA testing, relative accuracy test and audit. So if you have questions about any of that, again, please feel free to reach out to myself, to Mick or to Nora, we'll be happy to help in any way that we a bit more, even deeper detail about our Houston facility. Our, our capacity down there is just a shade over 30,000 square feet. That gives us the ability to hold up to 22 shelters being the average size of 10 by 20 by 9 in a climate controlled environment. Uh, we do also outside have a covered testing area, which gives us the space for an additional eight units uh, outside. So plenty of space for um, all of your system system integration needs our uh, some of the capabilities we can all we can do uh, sample system construction we can do wrap construction all the process electrical and mechanical integration can be done in there we can do hariba analyzer integration obviously but i think something that is um probably not widely known is our ability to do non hariba analyzer integration something that we're very proud of the fact that we have both the skill and the experience to be able to integrate, say you have a GC from another vendor, if you have a TOC analyzer, a turbidity analyzer, um, if you have a mass spec, um, a wide variety of manufacturers um, products into our shelters. Uh, it all just basically comes down to what our customers need. So if you need an analyzer installed in an enclosure on a rack, odds are we've done it and we would be happy to do it again. So some of the products that we offer in the process environmental group, again, um, our division, the gas analysis. So we have the, uh, we have trace gas analyzers in the GA line. We have ambient air monitors in the AP. Um, we have the multi-gas analyzer, which is the VA5000 series. That was one of our previous webinars, as was the P300, which is our portable gas analyzer, um, portable SIMS, if you will. Uh, and then we have the Enda 7000, which is our uh, flash product. It's our, it's our SIMS unit. Again, if you'd like to review our previous webinars on particular items, you can go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can view them all there. Um, and then we have our topic for today, which is the PS75, our continuous particulate monitor. It uses X-ray fluorescence. And so without further ado, I will pass this over 
to Yusuke. And again, if you do have questions on this particular, uh, on any of our particular items, you can certainly go to our YouTube channel, or if you have questions about things today, please do enter your questions into the chat box, and we'll be happy to address them once the show is over. So take it away, Yusuke. Okay, thanks, Lex. Uh, good morning and good afternoon. So today, thank you for joining today. Um, again, my name is Yusuke Mizuno. So it's difficult pronunciation for you. So, but I'm marketing and product manager in charge of process and environment gas product. Um, I hope everybody, uh, everyone is safe and healthy against coronavirus situation. So. Uh, today's topic of the webinar is new solution to identify tracing contamination source using PX375. We have been involved in the market research, uh, including looking for what kind of PM our customers are being conducted around the world, uh, what kind of challenges they have. And I have been also involved in developing or supporting the research project with cutting edge technologies uh, that we have. So based on our experience, I'm going to be talking about a um, brief explanation in the PX375. Next, please. Um, this is content, a list of today's webinar. Um, in our webinar session, I'm going to give you a brief explanation of particular matter called PM. And I will cast a spotlight on matter in ambient. We'll learn challenges of conventional analysis method, and then I will introduce solution with our new technologies. And the end of the webinar, I will be also talking about application and case study of the new solution. Let's step. Let's read. Okay, I will expect two items. All right. So uh, this table is showing air pollution, air merging network in the US. Initial driver in terms of air quality as national ambient air quality standard, which, uh, which the EPA has set six principal pollutants, which are called criteria, air pollutant. Others are for understanding long-term air quality trend verification of air quality uh, prediction model and supporting implementation of PM2.5 national ambient air quality standards. Um, chemical spe Specialization Network, CSN, is a long-term national monitoring program of the EPA. This supports implementation of PM2.5 national ambient air quality standards. And the National Air Tactic Train Station uh, network was developed to fulfill the need for long term tax monitoring data of system quality. Therefore, so our product PX375 like comes into our all air monitoring network with our chemical air monitoring stations as alternative or supplementary solutions. Next, please. So this is six pollution criteria, which include lead, rig, as tactic pollution. Recently, uh, improvement of air quality is making the number of stations be decreasing. Next, please. So um, many kinds of industrial facilities or residential area exhaust passive PM emissions. It's, it's generally based on the US EPA dynamic air quality management framework, including uh, goal setting, defining required emission reduction, control strategies, implementation, uh, operation of result and trend and uh, um, adjusting a plan to more effectively um, meet a switch goal. An initial driver exists such as uh, meeting criteria, 
but uh, in real world, many kind of PM sources from, uh, example, the power generation, semiconductors, uh, petrochemical, and so on. And basically, air monitoring network uh, to figure out long-term trend, not short-term along with economic activities. Therefore, it's very hard to find out or figure out source because these source differ de depending on industrial structure, human activity, uh, characterization of loc location area. So uh, we use modeling based on measurement result and predict or estimate air quality and contamination source. Next, please. Before going to deeply discussion and introduction, so what is particulate matter or PM 2.5? Particulate matter is a mixture of sol solid or liquid particles uh, suspended in the air. Generally, force particle is defined that aerodynamic diameter is from 2.5 micrometer to up to 10 micrometers. They are relatively uh, heavier and thus tend to settle. Here's an example. Now, PM2.5 refers to uh, part particles uh, have aerodynamic diameter less than 2.5 micrometers, which is more than uh, 100 times thinner than human hair and thus remain suspended for longer time. PM is forced as a result of, for example, uh, fuel com combustion and chemical reactions that take, per in, take place in the atmosphere, natural uh, process such as uh, forest fires also contribute to PM25 in the air. Uh, exposure for PM245 has short term and not and long term health impact. Short term increase uh, uh, irritation in the eyes, nose, and swallowed, coughing and sneezing, and so on. Next week. And this is this slide showing images of PM from different generation sources. As I said, one of the cause of PM is industrial activities such as fuel combustion and so on. And if you take a close look at PM from different facilities, you can see how much different they are in the size and shape. Um, example, uh, PM10 is formed by natural origin such as soil and so on, and PM25 is formed by anthropogenic origin by human activities, economic activities also. Um, it's also helpful to trace contamination source from additional angles like uh, size and shape. Next, please. So uh, let's go uh, to spot on the metal or element in the ambient. So it's main topic. Um, the image, this image are examples of different chemical composition of two different samples. PM are composed of element carbon, organic carbon, ion component, inorganic elements, and so on. Actually, Difference is not only the size or shape, but, but also the chemical composition of each PM is also significantly uh, different. Therefore, the force enforcement, enforcement of environment standard need to figure out what chemical components PM compose of on the regional seasonal basis. As we learned, we, we have learned it's well known that PM2.5 has health impact, thus people are caring about PM2.5 concentration. Recently, 
um, attention is being paid to chemical composition of PM2.5, especially in organic elements, in other words, metals. Next, please. Next, please. And now, question is, why density in air is a particular interest in of researchers over the world? We have two answers. First of all, there is hazardous to human health. This is very important. For example, according to H uh, WHO, Calvin, uh exposures are associated with kidney or bone damage. Cadmium uh, has also been identified as a potential cause of lung cancer. Lead exposures have developmental uh, effect on uh, infect and, or and children. And uh, about blood pressure in adults. Secondly, since different generation sources emit widely different metals, they serve as trace element to identify contamination generation sources. The approach to identify the contamination generation source is called source apportionment. Next, please. Now, um, I guess we'd like to know what actions are being taken in regard to the fact that metals are hazardous and uh, they can serve as trace element. Here is an example of metal monitoring network programs and regulations of the USAPA. I brought up the lid as an example. And the description in colors, colors are class name for monitoring network program or regulation. Only more than four classes are applied and I took four out of them. Uh, let's look at one by one. The first one in red as parameters subject to the 40 C CFR appendix uh, regulation, which is mandatory uh, monitoring requirements. And the next air pollution uh, called HAPS or SHED are those known to cause cancer and other serious health impact. The Clean Air Act requires, requires the US EPA to regulate taxed air pollutant from categories of industrial facilities. The next is urban air taxi pollution. All right. There are 187 HAPs that US EPA is required to control. From these HAPs, EPA identified 30 that pose the greatest pot potential health threat in urban areas. So the parameters, so these classes are applied are monitors at stations based on specific criteria. The last one, but not the latest, least chemical specification network trace element, US EPA established a uh, PM245 chemical speciation network consisting of speciation trends, long term trend network site, and supplemental uh, speciation site. I uh, mean, uh, you know, for field objective, objectives. Uh, the assessment on trend, uh, the development of effective state implementation plan and examination of regulatory compliance, the development of emission control strategies and tracking progress 
of control the progress. Yeah, so as of the 2018, the PM2.5 uh, is your chemical specialization network includes about 50 specializations, trend network, and over 140 states and local air monitoring stations. Next, please. So, as I explained, there are the uh, 187 that had the less HAPs that EPA is required to control in terms of human health impact. From these HAPs, uh, EPA identified 30 that pose a greatest potential uh, threat in urban area. Also, these HAPs are referred to uh, as um, 30 uh, urban air tactic and California has set California reference exposure level also. So um, these are, um, you know, uh, it, it's a uh, take care of uh, human health. So, and uh, uh, the uh, angle for long-term trend. So this regulatory uh, approach are considered based on uh, fast air emission monitoring from source oriented or ambient oriented. And today's seminar, we'd like to talk about source oriented monitoring, which mentions all light side. So short term trend. The table on short term trend is a, an example of source apportionment approach, which is called chemical mass balance, CMB for short, or positive matrix flux, uh, factorization, PMF. In this method, you will have measurement data of the metals in air at location and based on which elements are in present at certain uh, concentration level assumption of generation source is made. For example, metal indicators for oil combustion are vanadium and nickel. Another example is titanium, ion, sulfur, and antimony for brake dust or uh, from vehicles. And even the type of generation source is the same. For example, to uh, neighboring state plants, each facility emit unique metals and, or at different levels. For example, uh, because of the different impurities included in the low metals uh, that they use, which uh, specify different contribution to uh, the PM generation for each facilities. Next, please. So uh, we're gonna going to learn challenges of conventional analysis method. Next, please. Um, as I explained, PM is composed of many different components. Um, in order to analyze them, different manual methods are conventionally used for uh, metal or in inorganic element, um, XR, ICPMS, PC, and so on, are a uh, conventional used manual analysis method. This is the uh, current situation about conventional analysis method for type of components, uh, ion components, or the other one, element carbon, or so on. Next, please. However, the conventional uh, analysis method includes several challenges, uh, like steps to get uh, result data from a sampling particular matter. Firstly, it required a high cost for analysis, including uh, professional skilled labor costs, the, ex the ex expensive lab instrument or the outsourcing analysis contract with the lab who has the facilities. Number two, the conventional method, um, high sampler, low sampler, or 
uh, and other samplers are like image correct the sample and you have to uh, transport sample to lab and then the sample goes on the sample preparation or a pretreatment and finally analysis a conducted in the lab due to this this procedure uh it's typical take about at least a couple of weeks and more and more from sampling start to analysis data completion number three due to complex the procedure and the cost uh, typically only uh, one analysis data in 24 hours in, uh, is available as uh, it's light difficulty in capturing rapid outbreaks of unique elements concentration and the last human uh, error and sample condition change over the transportation result in uncertainty and the bias of the analysis data of course so uh, um this then this one is supposed to have a QAQC document, but uh, the potential error. All these actually are uh, the challenges that our product developers faced when they were doing PM research at LabG and they have developed the product to might make uh, research life easier. Next, please. Next, please. Uh, this is brief conclusion. I want to explain why we launched same continuous PM mass and element con uh, monitor called PX375. As I explained, basically conventional method is performed by offline method as I explained. To understand chemical species uh, in PM composed of with high resolution at least a couple hours, along with community pollution um, based against uh, fossil uh, emissions, air emissions that pass through stack or non stack emissions. The current way goes around the required step to sampling pretreatment and analysis, sampling pretreatment analysis going along. The current way goes around the required. Um, you do. So uh, this right that it takes a lot of human cost and time and the difficulty to catch trend because sampling time is typically 24 hours. And pretreatment phase, there are will be difficult result depending on the engineer's technique. Therefore, we provide this product as a solution for potential requests from the market. So uh, this product gave us at least our elements data continuously. These data should drive the improvement of air quality. Next, please. So, here is Oriva solution. This instrument is called PX375. It's a um, same continuous ambient element and mass monitor. First solution blocked by PX375 is automation of sampling and analysis with X ray fluorescent technology. And uh, now, uh, not only XRF, but also better attenuation technology is equipped in the one company design 90 inch system. Now, online monitoring of PM mass concentration and metal concentration is both realized. Since um, it's on monitor, sampling and analysis are all completed as site. You can set measurement frequency shortest at 30 minutes, which enable, <clears throat> enable capturing rapid outbreaks 
of unique elements concentration for given time period, flexible operation condition of restrained power consumption of maximum 400 VA supports a wide range of applications. Our original field to tap with a um, PDF layer of N non fabric, the two layers, uh, which is a horrible patent filter. This is a breakthrough common sense and is able to be used for manual analysis, comparison, comparison, uh, check to. So these are generous uh, specification for mass analysis. Uh, beta lay uh, attenuation is used. Uh, measurement range is from 200 to 1,000 microgram per cubic meter, meters. Of course, uh, we have optional range. Uh, for metal analysis, uh, XR energy dispersible X-ray spectroscopy is adapted, and you can set element analysis time in order. In other words, X lay um radiation, radiation time from one hundred seconds to up to ten thousand seconds. You can set uh um uh you can set uh these analysis time the selectable. And uh, uh yeah, PM sampling time is selectable from a half an hour to twenty four hours. And size is uh, approximately uh, seven, 70 inch for width and 22 depth, uh, 11, uh, point two for the height. And, yeah. uh, and also data is served as CSV file format and uh, external connection is Ethernet and the USB. That means so you can uh, communicate or talk was our product by your computer local network. Next piece. So, yeah, this is uh, this right is showing the external view and internal uh, view of the instrument. It's an I said ninety inch lock with. You have sampling inlet from selection of TSP, PM10, PM2.5, and PM1. When you open the front door, you will see the filter tape loaded for sampling. At internal view, you can find the better attenuation unit for mass, uh, for mass uh, concentration analysis, and also next to is uh, XRV unit for element analysis. You also find out the detectable element and lowest detection limit. Regarding uh, detection uh, detectable elements, you can uh, technically detect from aluminum to uranium, uh, excluding uh, rare gases and the element with the uh, atomic number smaller than 13, which refer to a uh, detail of LDL, right? Next, please. So uh, this is an uh, internal image of PX, uh, and I'm going to explain the measurement cycle. Firstly, the particulate matter in ambient are taking the sampling head. Then only the PM smaller than PM 2.5. Of course, it depends on the separators, but in case of PM 2.5, PM 2.5 micrometers go, goes through the separators and is corrected on the sampling filter. Continuously, PM mass concentration analysis is conducted with beta ray attenuation with correction of sample on the future tape. Once it reaches uh, the tape advanced time, the collected sample on the filter tape is advanced to the next position and 
an element concentration analysis is conducted with X-ray fluorography. There is also CMOS camera installed to capture the image of sampling condition remotely without op uh, opening the instrument. X has uh, as drive approach source apportionment from the three factors which are mass elements and the car of PM from um, uh, CMOS camera. Next, please. Um, from now, so uh, I will explain uh, dashboard or uh, main screen and uh, operation screen of XRF. We are offering a hardware software package called Automation uh, variety uh, measured mass and elements concentration data to manage and analyze measured elements in real time. This package includes intuitive software which is accessed through PX365 or by the site computer or your computer using remote uh, desktop equipped with Windows for free. Um, this platform also generates multiple graphical analysis to drive a unique insight on the tempo and variability uh, trend of the mass and elements. This intuitive uh, software will allow the users to make data driving decisions toward efficiently uh, managing passive uh, emissions. Next, Reese. Chris. Yeah. Thanks. Um, this slide is showing a demonstration of operating screen for XL. Uh, we produce a variety of attractive functions to examine uh, measured elements so data set collected over time and display them through an intuitive user-friendly interface. PX375 stores at life spectrum and the image uh, images uh, of corrected sample of is analyzed. Analyzed. It means that this allows the user to examine the spectrums or samples in addition to uh, the list of calibrated elements. Of course, uh, you can add additional elements after installation. These graphics are designed to allow the user to reanalyze corrected sample and be able to be able to detect new elements in addition to standard calibrated elements. The combination of elements in uh, like uh, conjunction with um site data such as uh, metallical radar or other gas components or as an index, uh, traffic information or and so on. Also allowed to allow to assist identification of contamination source and provide improved directionality uh, and estimation of PM source in impacting the monitoring site. Uh, if we want to focus on the detail analysis, you can export the data into Excel file or uh, CSV format. These data provide more detailed parameters uh, analysis condition, which uh, X-ray line is uh, used to detect each element. So you can then write down uh, the information, uh, whatever we want on spectrum. This platform will save you the time and labor cost. Next, please. So uh, last contents, uh, I'll, I will introduce uh, application introduction and case studies. Next, please. So uh, from this, I'm going to give you the application and uh, case studies. Um, this is overview list of application. Uh, go back to. Great. 
Yes. Yes. yes thank you. Uh, this overview list uh, application we have with customers over the world. Uh, PX3 Mary used for advanced air quality monitoring station where there is already station monitoring gases parameters and a PX8 being additionally installed. Regarding a source apportionment, we ran PMF um, as an as one of the method merging. Of course, there are the, uh, many uh, there are ways. Uh, but in regard to automotive research, the uh, automotive uh, manufacturing are develop, developing uh, and launching the more and more effort, uh, electricity vehicles. And uh, some of uh, countries already set the target timeline to obsolete uh, vehicles with fuel oil. And uh, Although this trend is uh, achieved uh, the very strict requirement of PM reduction of vehicles. However, the remaining the question is fuel well combustion is not only PM regeneration source of vehicles. Tire and brake dust are also source of PM. We are conducting the, uh, with the, this approach uh, with uh, university or the, the company and so on using the, these products. And there, the amount of, of different material uh, research in automotive industry are also paying similar interest to the inter in instrument. So uh, we can uh, we can also merge the stack um, metal emission and some customers um, insert the PX on the SIP or utilize or manage research. So uh, I will be covering the detail of application in the coming rest right. Next, please. application introduced is going gonna uh, be advanced step by step. The first case study um, uh, is pretty manual in a way so that the user custom uh, you can and the customer can the custom and uh, make a tailor-made approach to themselves. The analysis data of px 3 file is saved as a CSV file as a set in the dedicated a PC and you can quickly uh, make graph like like this. Um, this is an example. Um, here they're showing the correction, the mapping between the PM 2.5 mass concentration and many different metals. Uh, X axis stand for uh, TSP mass concentration and Y axis stand for the metal concentration. Among this uh, mapping, uh, you can uh, easily figure out the different relationship between uh, TSP and uh, um, element uh each element uh tsp yeah in this case uh, not not tsp not tpm tsp so um so for indicate uh the two types of source of each pass through a merging site and in case of lead is vanadium um one of the example of assumption uh you can make around as front emitting Right, around amount of SO2 is highly uh, contributing to the PM generation land area. The example of such application is for example, coal fire facility or non steel facility and so on. Next, please. Okay, next, please. So uh, this is the uh, case study. Uh, the study uh, plant was uh, all located by the bay entrance and there is a residential area down to south. Also, there is a highway in between uh, these two area. And the situation was uh, residential had uh, health damages from PM and reported to um, regional government. In such situation, the authority imposed penalty for pollution and ask for countermeasures. The challenges for the students' plant were uh, there are so many PM generation souls nearby alone. Vehicles are running uh, on the highway is also one of the souls. It's it's difficult to clarify the true contribution of steel plant operation to 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 the uh, health damage. Next please. So a uh, solution or visualization of by uh, combination of the data of PX certified window speed, wind direction, and <clears throat> geographic data, uh, advanced assumption of 
contamination contribution to a particular time. Uh, these are a mapping uh, uh, of uh, in integrated data for given time, the pill. Uh, the left above is mapping data of uh, wind speed of uh, wind direction. It's telling us that wind was coming more frequently uh, from south and the southeast during uh, this period. The wind speed was a little st stronger from southwest. The next light right uh, above is for mapping of uh, ion, uh, which are the markers as I introduced the previous slide. The length uh, of current area for the particular direction uh, indicate the uh, concentration of metal or from the direction. You can see uh, is clearly uh, coming from the direction uh, where the steel plant is operating. If we roll number, amount number, the window direction from uh, north. It's also indicating strong effect from the steel plant, but other generation source from different direction are also contributing. Uh, now take um, a look at sulfur and PM25. So uh, sulfur is not indicator. So uh, in case of steel plant, so they are a very similar shape. Uh, they are showing the contribution from uh, any other uh, direction similarly. They don't seem to work as trace element of steel plant PM generation. Next, please. Oh, oh, this slide shows a trend graph uh, of uh, uh, PM and element concentration. So far, it's, oh, it's separated into different graphs. So because of the uh, scale is uh, too far away. Uh, what I we can uh, see from the graph is, is the peak of so far is correlation uh, with PM two point five basically all the time and they are commonly observed regardless of a specific facility operation uh, presence. On the other hand, the pit particular, particular elements such as a lead or iron are expected as a contamination, particularly from the steel manufacturing facilities. Because of the, the, the result, there are possibly a set trace elements as lead and iron. Now, they can explain the true contribution of a plant operation to house damage with the breakdown of composition of PM. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah, so um, our total solution. Uh, yeah, there are obviously a necessity uh, for investigation of PM complex generation mechanism. PM is already being monitored as public awareness in is much improved, but identification of PM generation source is not well achieved, which is very important to implement uh, contamination reduction programs. It is known that ambient metal mo uh, element monitor is helpful for a health study by ranking F effect to PM25 com components and source apportionment. But there, there are um, many sites need to monitor it and the budget or labor with professional scale um, are limited. Next, please. So, uh, for such situation, uh, here is solution horrible provide. The complete system PM mass element monitor and other gases uh, with data running something, a reporting system also uh, in the mobile truck or um, very compact uh, air monitoring station. In case uh, you can't install multiple fixed stations, so you can move a uh, mobile station, mo mo monitoring station to multiple sites. So, uh, Horiba is one uh, stop supplier of complete system. Next, please. So, today, I, I focused on a specific 
uh, how do you call uh, the PM of uh, social portraits T or something. So, but uh, uh, there are a lot of PM generation effect uh, as I explained uh, at the beginning to present the slide. So, by few way combustion and so. So, next please. And uh, this is the last slide. Uh, today, so uh, we learned PM is from uh, many different generation sources and uh, they're the goodness differently. Uh, metal in the PM also work as the trans element. They are monitored the hazardous elements are and trans element globally. Now technology available for advanced research it is used for many applications thanks to a flexibility. And finally, for people uh, who are listening to webinar today, and uh, now it's your chance to get your hand on the technology. Uh, thank you very much. That's all. Um, I will yeah. ask my colleague Lang yeah, to take. Thanks, Yusuke. That was very informative. So we have a few questions here that I'll I'll read off to you. And uh, okay, so the first one would be is filter standard and does the filter change based on a PM1 measurement? Yes. So is the sampling filter standard or optional? Yeah, right. Uh, uh, the same, same features. Does it come with it or do we have to address whether or not they want? So, Sorry, a little bit noisy. I, I, I can't catch you. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I see, can you see the questions that are up on the screen? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, is the sampling filter standard or optional? Uh, all right. So, uh, the sampling filter is uh, the standard. Even if, uh, yeah, the customer change uh, the separators to you. Change based on a PM one measurement. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah, we just we just uh change the separators from PM two point five separated to PM one separators. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay. And now the next question is um is a PC is a PC mandatory to work next to the PX or is it possible to have the PC remotely connected via yeah. Ethernet? It's mandatory for command. Um, now, currently, uh, uh, we're, we're not supposed to have uh, um, a command or original command, something like that. that but uh, uh, we designed uh, based on the windows. That means uh, we, the uh, customer they can uh, specialize or custom the program to pick up the data from I mean, so you can connect uh, the PX directory from your uh, computer via internet or something, local network. Okay. Uh, let's see the next question. Could you explain briefly how we can apply this monitor to work uh, in a continuous stack metal, stack metal monitoring? So basically they want to know whether or not uh, okay. it almost be used like a SIMS. Right. So, um, the big difference between the ambient and the stack is uh, uh, gas, uh, the, how do you call, uh, the condition, the element, environment condition, and also uh, mass or other concentration. Therefore, so uh, now uh, we, we are trying to um, uh, uh, um, evaluate and uh, uh, propose to uh, stack monitoring console by using a uh, dilution system. So we we are uh, making the, the our original dilution system. So that means so you you can do that. Okay. We can try. Yeah. Okay. Next question is: Could this device be used to detect plastic organic particles? The polypropylene PET. Uh, no, because uh, X yeah X R S based on so um uh, element so. It can't differentiate between them, correct? Yeah. 
that's okay. The next question is um, some customers don't need to measure heavy metals for an extensive amount of time. Is it possible for customers to use normal filters like the BAM 1020 from Metone to just to just measure dust concentration? Yeah, so um, of course it depend, depend, it depends on uh, uh, um, the uh, concentration in ambient air. So uh, basically uh, um, 1020 or the other uh, the thermal or uh, some uh, other dust monitor use grass fiber tape. So grass fiber tape include uh, many contamination elements. That, so it, it depends on the uh, ambient situation. But basically, so we, we can't use these filters. Okay. From, from, uh, from concentration. Yeah, yes, from concentration. Okay. okay, so they are proprietary, gotcha, okay. Um, and then the last question we have is, what is the EPA reference method used for PM 2.5 to validate the measurement accuracy. Yeah, so uh, now uh, we are proceeding with evaluation, so with uh, local EPA. So, and also uh, we already got, uh, how do you call, uh, the good result from other other countries EPA, such as China and Japan and uh, India also. So now I'm trying to get good result, so from local APA or, yeah. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, those are all the questions that we have. Again, if you have further questions, please feel free to reach out to myself, to Mick or to Norio or Yusuke as well. Uh, and we'll be happy to address those questions. Uh, this particular webinar will again be posted on our YouTube channel, probably Tuesday or Wednesday next week, given Monday is a holiday here in the States. Uh, so we thank you very much for your time. Uh, hope the hope the remainder of your week is good and, and that you have a nice weekend as well. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much.